My name is Matt, welcome back to the shop, and today we're cracking back on the list. Um, two stroke RPM. So, uh, I said in a video back in the day that two strokes equal higher RPM. And I didn't elaborate on this. And when you actually look at, uh, just say, a KTM, like a 250 or something, they have both the four stroke and the two stroke variants, and you'll find that the two stroke revs up to about 8,000 RPM, and then it basically chokes out. That's as basically as high as it'll really go, can go a bit higher. But its power band is sat around about uh, seven, six, seven, eight around there. Uh, but when you look at the, the oh, fucking hell, when you look at the four stroke, uh, two stroke, four stroke RPM you'll see that it goes a lot higher. And then people are going to comment right now, oh, there's also two strokes to went up to 20, 22 and 24,000 RPM. Yes, there is. And then that begs the question, if I say, I said, two strokes can rev higher than four strokes. From a theoretical point of view, yes, they can. So why don't we see this? Power is torque times RPM. The R revolutions we don't really need but it's a cycle. The per minute bit is the bit we want. It's torque per minute and when you have a basically a force and torque's a force you times it by time you get power because work or power is what you require to do something. So work done has to be over time. It can't be instant. You know you can't instantly do moving you from here to over there it takes time and you can actually calculate how much uh, power is being used from going from here to over there any road this is why when you look at stuff like bulbs and stuff like that it'll say or batteries it'll say watt hours because watts is power hours watts is over time anyway but you get what i mean watt hours instead of watt seconds um or just watts any road. <sighs> yes, so what the fuck am I talking about? Well, the simple thing is, the simple fact is this. Uh, two strokes theoretically go a lot higher than four strokes, but the simple fact is they have, generally speaking, lower uh, reciprocating masses and lower parasitic losses because they don't have to wing round a valve train. However, why aren't then two strokes... Um, why don't they have ridiculous high RPM ranges? Because of their volumetric efficiency, it's all to do with the port timing. So, the port timing is kind of like, um, this is our bad <laughs> to good scale, or we'll just call that volumetric efficiency. And then across here we just have our RPM range. So what happens is with a two stroke, because it's um, ports and all the rest of it, and when you close things and when you don't and all the rest of it, because that geometry is locked, because the volumetric efficiency isn't very good, your torque curve is, is, is really, you know, kind of like that, where it's not as gradual and not as lovely through the RPM range. You really have these steep sides, this peak, um, is, you know, it, it's peak and then it's not. So, um, you have a narrow band. Now we want actually um, all engines, really, if we could, to run the lowest possible RPM to get where our peak power is, because then that's less stress on the parts. When we spin faster, then that means that there's more uh, inertia to overcome and uh, friction is higher per minute, per second, what have you, because you're revolving things more and more and more so. Um, you know, we want our RPM to be quite low, so having our bike at 8,000 RPM really isn't a bad thing. If you can produce the power that this engine can produce, and it's just there, um, you know, th this is the other thing as well, is you, you're gonna, you, it's diminishing returns, you're gonna fall off here, so why would you want to go higher? The fact of the matter is, because four strokes um, have uh, better volumetric efficiency 
it doesn't mean that their power band um, has to necessarily occur at a higher RPM. You can control that uh, with your bore stroke and stuff like that, and how many valves you use and your flow in and all this. Stuff. It's just that four stroke power bands are a lot more, um, they're flatter. You know what I mean? So your peak is here, but it's a lot broader, which means that you can run this engine um, to higher RPMs. You know what I mean? If you're still getting good torque at 8,000 RPM here, well then keep going. The, f the fact of the matter is, is that because you're using port timing and because everything has to work in synchronization and your exhaust and all the rest of it um, has to work with a, 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 a specified, a, a picked RPM, then, you know, two strokes, because their volumetric efficiency is crap, it falls off pretty quickly. You know, as soon as you start going any faster than that, just say, just say if 8,000 is where our peak is, as soon as you start going any faster than that, then things start to, you know, um, uh, your expansion chamber pressure wave starts to arrive too early, too late, stuff like that. Um, the pulses in your manifold, uh, your reeds start to flutter, all these horrible things start to happen because they rely on basically fuck all, it's all magic <laughs> in a two stroke, that's what you're relying on, you're relying on everything just being perfectly balanced. That's why everyone says two strokes is all about tuning, it is. Um, what makes me laugh is when people say, oh you've got to tune a two stroke right. I have yet to see many, many people actually who say that actually do some tuning. Not many of them make their own exhausts or make alterations to their exhausts. Not many of them do anything fucking stupid like that. Someone might attack a couple of ports with a, a Dremel now and then, which makes, yeah, you really can't make that many changes unless you actually really make changes to your uh, cylinder um, geometry and all the rest of it. But anyway. So yes, two strokes because they weigh less and because they've got pa less parasitic losses can, if you design them, rev just as high and higher than two strokes. Two strokes have that limitation of um, valve, uh, valve float and other valve train associated issues. Two strokes, yes they have the revalve issue, just go to a rotary valve and you can pretty much rev the shit out of it as high as you want to go. Why, another reason why we don't do this is controllability. If you could draw power delivery um, as it feels, you'd have fuck all, fuck all, fuck all, and then you'd have a lot of oomph, and that's the, oh, I can feel the power band. You know, and they start fucking wanking off these bastards. And you know, and if this is at 16,000 RPM, what the fuck are you gonna do for the rest of it? You'd have to then make a gearbox that would just sit you in this power band and it's at this kind of power level, why would you want to do that? The fact of the matter is, is you need something that's handleable. Handleable? <laughs> something that you can handle. You need something you can control. One of the big problems and the differences between a GP500 two-stroke bike and a MotoGP bike four-stroke now is the fact that the two-strokes were just fucking wild, crazy animals. Some people say that was the cool bit. You're trying to race, not fall off. You know what I mean? As a rider, you'd be like, ah, fucking hell, can you make this less of an unpredictable bastard and give me a machine that I can actually race on? You know what I mean? So, yeah. Some people say the two strokes are better. Some people like the four strokes. Eh, I don't really care. It's more about racing. Who gives a shit? You know what I mean? It's all good fun. Any road, I hope that makes sense, and I'll see you in a bit.